One, two, three, four, five, and six. We are gonna make together starting right now. That's right, everybody. Welcome back to Making It Fun. I am Rob Appel from Michael Miller Fabrics, your host here at Making It Fun. I am super excited you are here joining me for block number six for our Peek into Batik, our wonderful quilt along we've been doing for the last six months. Now, if you're brand new to the Peek into Batik, this is what the block looks like with the Batik fabrics and the jet black. It's just beautiful. Quick reminder, you can get instructions for both the piecing, which we'll do right here today, or AccuCutting uh, for the AccuQuilt system uh, right over on the Michael Miller Fabrics blog. It's called Making It Fun also on the web. And then also we have links. I'll have links in the description below so you can get your free pattern, your free instructions, print them right out. They look like this. They're fantastic. And I'm just gonna follow along with this while we work today as well. Today's construction is gonna be super simple in the way we're doing it. We're only gonna need uh, four squares. These are five and a quarter inch and they're going to feature one of each of the colors we've been using. Now I'm using the basics here at Michael Miller because that's what I like to do at making it fun so that you can always go and find these fabrics but you can also find our beautiful batiks of course at all of your local quilt shops whether you're shopping at home online or you're shopping in person curbside pickup whatever you're doing out there supporting your local quilt shops that's what we're doing right here at making it fun as well. This is the Michael Miller fabric show so this is Michael Miller fabric always. This is one of my favorite all-time basics called hash dot the colors as we go are turquoise and meadow and mustard and this is our solid jet black which everybody obviously loves once again these squares have been made they are five and one quarter and before we go any further i'm going to stack them all up very accurately because we're going to do a couple of diagonal cuts so if you don't want to stack them accurately take the time to do each cut one at a time trick to this is Either way, you're going to lay your cutting tool, your ruler there, from corner to corner, cut all the way through, and then don't move a thing. Peel that ruler right up, drop it again corner to corner, and then we're going to slide on through. Make sure your body's adjusted to make sure you're safe as well. And now that's all we need to build the center block for this. We basically needed four of these triangle units. We're gonna make two by two. We're getting ready to load up the arc or whatever. So they're gonna be a little bit different as we go. So I'm just gonna take a second and I'm gonna to start to stack while we talk. Here, how y'all doing? Everybody doing okay out there? And getting my colors ready so we can start to build these. And I'm gonna build one of each set with you. And then I will be back with the magic of television with everything built to show you how to put the blocks together and the borders together. Uh, on this block. And again, as a quick reminder, the borders are the same for block after block after block, which is what makes it super fun and easy, learning a fun center. You can always make any of these blocks over and over again and make an entire quilt, and it's fantastic that way. Okay, so following my instructions right here, you can see in the middle, we're gonna make two of each set, and they're kind of opposite of each other. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna grab one of my, um, mustard color here and one of my turquoise color here. I'm gonna rotate them on the table to make sure I have them right, just like that. And then the other side, obviously, and this is the easy way, now just match up those like colors for yourself. I'm feeling a little rotationally challenged. Sorry about that. Okay, now I've got those two built. Before I go any further anywhere else, I'm gonna fold these right over here. Right now we're making big triangles out of these two small triangles quilting at its finest. We're gonna go over with our quarter inch seam allowance. Now one of my tricks is, is I'm actually lining up this back edge. All the straight edges are the most important. So let's start on that straight edge back at that corner when we start. I have a quarter inch seam allowance. I have an edge guide and that will help me stay a little more accurate. And truly as I sew through this here, I can also take a moment and come back over right now and just make sure that we're ready to go and I can fold over these two. Nothing has changed, even though I'm gonna rotate that in the air and this time you'll see the blue fabric going through, which would make sense if we're building opposites. A moment ago, we were looking at the gold fabric. And because of this, you can go ahead and chain piece. So we're matching our blues and our golds. 
cut those apart. And then let's just go ahead and press to the blue side for each of these. Press to the same side on each ones you're doing and that'll help us nest our seams later as we get ready to marry our triangles back together. And as a reminder, you're gonna make two of everything you're seeing me do here real quickly so that we have a total of four of these units when we're done. Okay, so we have two of those opposites. Next flavor is we're gonna make and we're gonna mix together the green and the black. Boy, I am rotationally challenged today. What on earth is going on in my head? There we go. And then again, I'm gonna come back in and do a maybe. <laughs> I'm cracking myself up. I'm gonna have to edit all of this out, but I won't. Okay, here we go. As you can see, again, opposites attract. And we're gonna make a two by two set to these opposites here using those flat edges to keep our triangles super nice. And that way you don't have to be afraid of the bias. And as we get ready to press on our black and green uh, units, let's go ahead and just press over to the black side here. And that will actually help us line up because we pressed over to the blue side on the others. And if you're late to the startup, just a quick reminder, I went ahead and made two each of all of these different units that we have. And now we're gonna to start to join these back together to make our squares. So when we make our squares, if you follow the instructions along, those were the pieces we were just doing. Now these pieces here, we're gonna make two of these like this. And so the easiest way for me is I'm gonna grab um, a couple of groupings here. And then I'm gonna set these aside right like this because I know those are gonna to go together. These are gonna to probably go together. Okay, and now I'm just gonna really make sure I'm doing it right. So as I bring this around here, this is the first one you're looking at on your instructions. And this is gonna be your black unit here, your green unit here. And then what happens is the black unit and the orange unit are gonna to touch, but I've got it backwards. Oh my goodness, so I put that in wrong. <laughs> So it's this one here, and then the orange and the black are gonna to touch like that, okay? So that's that unit. Maybe this will make it a little bit easier for me to build. I don't know what on earth is going on in my brain today, but I am super challenged with this. But I am checking my instructions. I've got the green below, the orange here, the blue. It's all working out that way. And here's my real excuse. I'll tell you right. You know, I live out in California and it's the middle of the summer and um, we're still being safe, but we are getting some wonderful surfing in. And so I'm filming this late in the afternoon and I have been surfing the last few mornings and getting some wonderful waves and my body is exhausted. So if I look tired, please forgive me. It's only because I've had a wonderful, wonderful time lately, but apparently maybe I should have filmed this tomorrow when my head's working again. Anyways, here we go. Let's sew these two lines together. I'll make this one. It'll make it a lot easier to line up the next block. So I'll just drop them on top. I'll show you that trick. Now, as we're sewing these together, I was mentioning it earlier, we want to go ahead and see if we can't nest up our seams nice. And we just do that by gathering those points in the center there. Drop that presser foot on over. And again, quarter inch seam allowance. So we're doing everything in Paris today. So again, we're just gonna go ahead and make sure that we've got these correct before I go any further. That was a little bit of a goofy startup, but if you've been enjoying all the videos here at Making It Fun, there are a lot of them are those goofy startups, of course. Okay, so I've got my black to my green, my blues below, perfect, okay. And over here, I wanted my green and my black there with my orange and my blue there. Again, perfect according to the instructions. We're gonna make two of these. So now the easy way for me to do this is to rotate and rotate like that. So I know I have them just the way they were before. Grab those together, head on over to the sewing machine and finish out all of the blocks to make sure that you have two pairs of these squares now. And now that we have the um, four different block units all made up, I'm just gonna line them up here. And now again, I'm just gonna go back to our instructions here. And I'm gonna look really closely at this diagram here because it's gonna make life the easiest. So let's find one that is now green and black here, this way. And then we're gonna have the blue 
on the outside. And that's really the rule to the rest of this game, is you're going to rotate them so that the blue remains on the outside the whole time. Let me see if I did that right. I don't feel like I did. That should have been the orange one there. Correct. Got it. Because then the greens and the oranges are going to do that fun checkerboard effect, right? like that. And what it really is doing is forming this really cool multicolored pinwheel with the jet black fabrics in the center as it goes around. And that looks really, really cool as it's done. So those are your checkpoints you're looking for so that you do not have to dull your seam rippers today with me. We've done plenty of that around here making it fun before. Okay, so just as a double check, remember your blues are on the outside, orange, green, orange, green, the black's doing the pinwheel, and just like any other time we're building our squares or our units in machine quilting or making quilts on a machine, I'm gonna sew these blocks, these blocks, go across the center, hold on, I'm gonna jump into high-speed caffeinated mode so you can see all that happen. Same thing, quarter-inch seam allowances, super easy, super fun. We are now all done with the center of our block number six unit, peek into batik, right? Looking fabulous. A little extra thread, but we'll pull that out of there for us. Now I'm gonna show you how to do our borders. I've shown you before, but I'd be happy to walk you all through them again, very simply. We're gonna need a couple of different units, but they're all gonna build out of the same principle of basically what we would call a flying geese unit. So we're gonna build these off of here. It's gonna make kind of the star point. So we're gonna make four of these flying geese units, and then we'll add some of these snowball, these cornerstones, we call these, to the block. So these will go on here like this as we get towards it. So we're gonna need two with and two without the cornerstones. But let's just start together on the beginning. And these uh, little squares, now this is the wonderful whirlpool color of the Michael Miller marble fabric. I have used this fabric for years. I absolutely love it as one of our basics. These squares right now are four and a half inches. And I've already taken the time to draw a single diagonal line already across the edge to edge, or I should say corner to corner here. And that is going to be our sewing line. Our thread's going to run right down that line as we adhere them with needle and thread to a rectangle of the jet black. That rectangle is four and a half by eight and a half inches. No problem there. So I'm just going to grab one of these to start. And what I'm really doing is I'm making sure that these three edges out here look good because that was what really counts. Now I like to come over and sew from that corner up. And as I said earlier, that's our sewing line now. So I'm going to drop my presser foot so the needle's right on that line. And I'm watching it travel through the front of the presser foot. And what we're going to do is we're going to sew all the way through here. We're going to cut our thread. Now, when you're doing all four of these, of course, you can chain piece this too. But what I want you to do is put on only one of the blue squares first, because then we're going to come over here and we're going to cut off the excess. Now, if you saw the video I did a few weeks ago, I started showing you fun ways to play with the design wall and these excess pieces. These are where they came from. So as I trim these off, and thank you all for the wonderful suggestions. There were a lot of ideas about sewing this part first and all of that. What I'm trying to do is point out right now is go ahead, mark I've got a quarter inch mark running right down on top of the threads we just put there. I'm going to go ahead and now cut this with the rotary cutter. I'm going to save these little triangles later because I have this giant stack of these half square triangles we've already been playing with as we were throwing them on the design wall last week. And that's where they come from. So save them because we're making a lot of these that are the same size. So you've got a small quilt or maybe a pillow or something to go with this project when we're all done. I'm just getting excited. You know me. All right. So back to work we go, folks. I need us to press this over first so that when we put this one on, the corners match up beautifully. Makes a nice little point up there. So I'm actually pressing over into the blue fabric. So this breaks the rules of press to the dark side because the black is technically darker than the blue. But I press that over there. And now as you get ready to put this piece on, you do need to be cautious. I want you to make sure that you're forming a triangle with that stitch line and this black line you see here. Make sure all these edges up here are lined up beautifully. And then what I like to do on this particular one, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to actually start back at what would be the middle of the block, that upper corner. That's the one we want to look the most accurate. And we're going to now sew down that same drawn line. all the way off, cut our threads, cut off our triangles first, right? So again, just looking at that line with my ruler, perfect. And I am now taking the time to make these more accurate so that they are easier to work with later. 
pressing back over again into the blue fabric. So you just made the second one of these that you needed, right? So again, you were gonna make four of these total, two of which we're gonna add more squares onto. I'm gonna let you guess the size of these. No, I won't make you do that. That's terrible, but mathematically you should know these are also four and a half inch squares because they have to fit back in on that four and a half inch by eight uh, and a half inch rectangle that was the black. Lots of numbers. <laughs> I love y'all, I'm glad, but I love numbers too. So right now this is super simple. I'm dropping that jet black right on top of my marble fabric on the right sides. And I'm gonna sew this one down with my quarter inch. Simple Simon here, all the way off the edge. Just blast through those threads right now. And then while we're here, because it's not gonna get in the way, just rotate it on the table, drop on right sides together, the other side, that other cornerstone. For these units, I come back to the ironing station and I like to press into the square that I just stitched on on both directions. That's gonna kinda help me in the next feature, lining things up. And that next feature is gonna be just that. Let's line this up, let's finish this off together, let's finish it off strong. So now I'm gonna take my short sides first and I'm just gonna make sure that those short sides pointing out, pointing out because they form that star border as you see over here on the design wall that is so cool. So I can use this center seam and that center seam to help things stay as accurate as I choose. And just like a moment ago, I can sew on one side and then the other before I have to return to the ironing board. And now for this side where I've got the short sides on the block, I'm actually gonna press the short sides into the block. So I'm holding the block up in the air, using my iron to press that over. Same on the opposite side, pressing the seam from the short side into the block as much as possible there. Because earlier, remember, we pressed those cornerstones out and that's what made it so nice so that now I can match up those seams, nest those seams as we go. So flip it on over, make sure everything is as we wanted it with those seams nested. Make sure this corner's got a nice pretty start off too and hit it with another quarter inch seam allowance. I think we better take a moment to press this so we can really show it off well. But while I'm doing that, I'm just gonna remind you, you can get your free patterns for the pieced or the Accu quilt at michaelmillerfabrics.com. Up in the top corner, it says uh, quilt along. It's called Peak into Batik because originally it was made with these beautiful batik fabrics from Michael Miller and the jet black. And I just wanted to use my basics because that's one of the things I'm really doing a lot here at Michael Miller Fabrics is trying to promote the use of the basics. And that way you can also find these beautiful fabrics in all of your local quilt shops when you go in for a visit. Please make sure you tell them that Rob over at Making It Fun and Michael Miller says hello. And this number six block is all complete. I will see you all in about a month for block number seven. I will see you several times before uh, that point. I don't, what am I trying to say here? Throw this thing on the wall. Let's get out of here, folks. Thanks again for being here. Really enjoy seeing you each and every time we do a fun video. Super excited about this. Adios, amigos.